All right. Welcome and welcome. How do you how do you intro? How do you intro it? Welcome to the first. No, there's good thing. All right. Welcome to the first episode of I read some pages and panels, a offshoot of the podcast Pages and Panels, which I am one of the hosts of, Kyle. Um, so the idea of this is just to cover. Um, not really review, because I'm not going to really review, well, I'm going to review, it's talking about uh, books, but I'm not going to really score anything, because I'm only going to talk about books that I like, which makes sense, right? I mean, why would I waste time on this, talking about things I don't like, um, which, again, is kind of the idea of the show in general, we don't really cover books that we don't like, because we have to... We don't have to. We are interviewing the creators, so it would be very awkward having a conversation uh, with a creator about a book we don't like. So generally every episode we do is that you can take that as a recommendation. Um, but I figured we'd try this out. Um, so this will be the first uh, episode of it. So to kick it off, we're going to be talking about... The book I read this past week uh, came out March 9th, uh, so fairly recently, um, and that is The Thud by Mikhail Ross, translated from German by Nika Knight, and published by Fander Graphics. So, this is the book here. Um, I'll actually put up a better image right here for a few minutes. Um, so this was a book I was familiar with. Obviously, we'll um, generally track down or look at anything Fanta Graphics put out. Uh, but this book looked uh, fantastic and was kind of on my radar. And then um, thought was out. Uh, so uh, oddly enough, they have it marketed as a young adult graphic novel. So I did find it in the young adult section at Barnes and Noble. But um, I don't really, I don't, I don't feel like it. I don't know. The young adult market for graphic novels is kind of weird because the majority of them, I feel like, yeah, would skew to uh, adults as well. Um, but uh, they are probably some of my um, more enjoyed comics in the recent years. Uh, I think they do some really unique things, and the thud is no different. But again, I don't, I don't know how it was marketed in Germany prior to release here, um, but that is kind of where it is at now currently. And I think it's actually Junior Library Guild Gold Standard Selection from Fantasy Graphics. I don't know if that's their header or I don't know, um, but anyway, I'll do a brief. Kind of summary of the book, I'll read the solicitation, it's probably the easiest. When Noel's mother has a stroke, his world is turned upside down. Especially when a man comes who tells Noel that he can't stay in the only home he's ever known. He has to move from his apartment and his city to some kind of care facility in a town he's never heard of. For the first time, Noel is on his own, who can he trust, who can lead off. So all that kind of happens maybe in the first quarter of the book, not even, maybe like the first 15 pages of that. Um, and that's, that is pretty much the story. The majority of it is this kind of coming of age story for Noel and his transition to this new hometown, uh, which is a town in Germany called Neue Corode. Um, the town itself is real, and it is extremely interesting. It is a town that is largely populated and run by people with developmental disabilities. They work, you know, at the restaurants, the supermarkets, the stores, the bars. Like, um, I, I think, uh, I think the population was like 900 people with development disabilities to 300 people. Um, I guess without development disabilities, however you would classify that. Um, the place sounds amazing, and the writer 
um, they call Ross, a little annual illustrator, creator of the book. Um, spent about two years going back and forth, kind of traveling to this town, um, interviewing the people there, you know, watching them, listening to their stories, and just kind of interacting with them. And that is how he kind of formed the basis of this story, um, which is really interesting because um, Noel himself is someone who uh, is living with a developmental disability, and that is why, you know, I, I think for any person, at least the, um, the idea of moving from your security, the place you've lived, to a new place and meeting new people um, is difficult, can be traumatic, uh, especially coming off of his mother having a stroke and essentially in the story going into a medically induced coma. Um, so in itself, uh, Noel's dealing with the loss, trauma of that, and being in a new situation, like I said, meeting new people, being living with roommates, um, you know, kind of experiencing love for the first time or what he thinks is love. Um, so all that would be incredibly difficult for a young man, Noel's 21, um, but to kind of filter that through Noel's eyes and how having the disability plays out um, in the story is really um, empathetic, really realistic, really true to form and um, respectful. And I think that is partly because of the research um, Miguel did going to Newica Road and kind of being with those people. Um, I myself have worked with people with development disabilities for, I don't know, probably over 10 years now. Um, right out of college, my first uh, job was in a program with uh, kids with autism. And then I worked with adults, both in kind of a day program in a residential setting. And then I was a case manager service coordinator for them. Um, and then uh, the agency I currently work on my current job. Um, the agency is, is largely that, working with people with development disabilities. I happen to work with um, a population strictly kind of traumatic brain injury related, but um, still within that world and, and that. And I'm always very concerned about kind of how that is being portrayed one of the big things is always kind of advocacy and getting out to the community and talking about um, kind of realistic views, expectations, and um, really kind of integrating them into the community. Um, and so kind of having a book told from that perspective by someone who doesn't have a developmental disability, I think would you know, maybe throw up some flags, but uh, this is an amazing kind of story in itself. And again, I think this story stands alone on, uh, on its own without kind of filtering it through someone with a development disability. But the way Mikhail does that is, I think smartly, he, he shows what the world is perceived like to Noel. And it's never, again, it's never, perceiving Noel as a child. He is 21 and his experiences, the difficulties he faces are, are very much young adult um, difficulties and challenges and you see those play out as they would for anyone. Um, but Mikhail just kind of filters them through how Noel might perceive them, which isn't, um, it's not a dis, it's not that he doesn't understand them, he just may perceive them differently, but um, in the end he comes to the, like, the same conclusion that any one of us would come to for the most part, whether it is through a failure or whether it is through a learning experience. Um, and Noel in itself, is he's an amazing character, he is, um, the way McCall writes him, he is you know, funny, he is endearing, um, the cast of characters around him are just as engaging um, and each one kind of gets their time to shine in the story and really has an impact on Noel and the way he is living there and adapts. It's just a 
overall, I think the art for Noel is amazing. Um, again, I think the voices are very distinct, very realistic. Again, um, spending so long working with um, that population, again, I think it is one of the most realistic uh, depictions. And again, realistic in the way that it is um, respectful, um, also captures kind of the true in intelligence of people with development disabilities I, for a long time and something I've always said is there, you know, someone with a development disability, whether it be autism or um, an intellectual disability or cerebral palsy, anything like that, it's like they, they are they are not dumb. They are incredibly smart. I don't know how many times I've been outsmarted by them in situations and it is because, again, they adapt. They you know, just because they may have a difficulty uh, processing something, they learn to process around that. They learn you know, different ways to get to the same outcomes that we want. So, again, I think Nicola does that amazingly throughout the story. And then, like I said, you're just, from the second I, you start reading it, you just fall in love with Noel, and you are just along for his journey. I read it in one sitting. I think maybe it is... About 124 pages. I mean, it's a fairly quick read in itself, but um, it's quicker in just the sense that you kind of sit down and are just enthralled with this experience. Um, another aspect of it, obviously, is those, the the artists on it, and it just it, it looks fantastic. I don't really know what else to say with it. Um, it's a very kind of cartoony, um, exaggerated depiction at times of emotions, experiences, and that really kind of sells that and again kind of pulls you into the way these characters are experiencing things or feeling things. Um, it's a very kind of animated feel in the sense of everything is fluid. People kind of, I, I enjoy when, you know, faces or eyes or anything like that can be exaggerated for emotion, especially in comics where you kind of really rely on that for, you know, movement or, you know, emotion. Um, I think oftentimes if you're going for realistic, you may lose a sense of that, especially kind of a story where this it's so grounded in kind of the emotion of the characters. Um, also, that helps kind of play up the humor. A lot of it uh, is, again, a lot of humor filled characters. There's a lot of uh, funny situations that they find themselves in. Again, not because of them having development stability. It is people finding themselves in unique, funny situations because of choices they make and so forth. And really, again, Noel is. Uh, a really engaging character. All the cast of characters around him provide the comedic elements based on kind of his life and his interactions with them, whether it be roommates, love interests, um, staff that work with him, so forth. Uh, I'll bring up quickly a page or two just to show it off. It's only preview pages. Because um, again, I, I would like you to go buy the book, um, so I'm not going to share anything that. Uh, hasn't really already been teased, but it kind of showcases the, the specifics of it. So um, this one quickly, this is shortly after um, Noel has discovered his mom having a stroke. Um, they're having a very traumatic experience for him. He is kind of shut down. Um, this nurse is engaged him. And so this first part, we see the doctors come in. And this is what I'm talking about, where um, they're talking fast. They are, you know, really not, you know, have no interest in explaining things to Noel. So to them, or the way Mikkel has uh, depicted them is, you know, these squawking bird, geese, goose-like characters. And really that's kind of how Noel is seeing the situation. Um, I will go to the next one. And you can kind of see the high, very colored pencil, very, very European and obviously, um, it is a German artist, but uh, very European slash Ghibli style artwork. Um, so it bleeds into the next page where um, 
you see how a character will interact with Noel and kind of meet him on his level. And this is another situation of seeing the world through Noel's eye. So a way she can kind of engage with him and calm him down, say his hands are special like a prince, and then you see Noel visualize himself as a prince. And then this moves it into this scene, one of my favorite depictions in the book. Um, so this is kind of the transition to him being picked up by quote-unquote the stash, the man who takes him to Newark Road. And you get this amazing scene of, again, now he's pictured himself as a prince and you see him in his castle being bombarded and sieged and that is, you know, them coming to get him and taking him to a new place. And that is, it's like amazing again to kind of um, be able to take the imagery and relate it to kind of how Noel sees the situation and really what is happening to him and how traumatic it is and again how he's relating to it and I think again to be able to do that visually and to really empathetically get you invested in this character and get him on his level is uh, quite amazing and I think this little sequence which again is very early on in the book um, is just fantastic. Um, I think that's probably about it. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to really be reviewing, per se, like score-wise. Um, I generally don't think that is super helpful. People kind of getting books. Um, yeah, I'd rather know about the book and, you know, why people enjoy it, why they don't versus a score. But uh, if we have to, I will give it a one stash man out of one stash man. Um, that's about it. Uh, again, it is The Thud out now um, by Fantagraphics, uh, written, illustrated, colored by Nicola Ross, translated from German uh, by Nika Knight, and like I said, it's out now. Um, you can pick it up. Um, if you want more conversations about books, uh, we'll be hopefully continuing to do that. Uh, if you want to hear me or me and Tim talk to creators uh, about these type of books. Um, you can do so at the Page of the Panel podcast. Um, but that's it. Uh, thanks so much for joining. And again, I hope you go pick it up, um, enjoy it. I would like to know your thoughts. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Kyle Overkill, um, but you can hit us up on the Page of the Panels as well. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed it, your thoughts on it, um, recommendations. Um, Please, recommendations. Uh, I, I like buying books. I like reading books. And the more excuses I have to do so, the better. But uh, that's it for now. Thank you. I don't really have a sign off. See you later. Please like and subscribe. I don't really have a lot to do. First time. I'm just going to stare. See Winnie the Pooh book. I'm pretty excited about that.